It's not easy to define the word collectivism in a few sentences because there are so many aspects to it. But it is easy enough to recognize a few of the major aspects, and you'll recognize it. One of the major aspects of collectivism is that it's based on the principle that the individual must be sacrificed, if necessary, for the greater good of the greater number. You'll find that under all forms of collectivism, whether it be Nazism, Communism, Fascism, Socialism, or Neoconism, or whatever you want to do. All of these forms of collectivism have that fundamental uh, philosophy or ideology beneath it. Now, that sounds pretty good to many people. It sounded good to me when I was in school and learning about the greater good of the greater number. After all, uh, we've been taught that we live in a democracy and therefore the majority should rule and all of these things which sound very good if you don't probe too deeply. And so many people think that that's a good concept. But it's a terrible concept when you, when you follow it to its roots. Because, you see, there's no such thing as a group. A group doesn't really exist. It's, it's all in the mind. Uh, the, the word group is an abstraction. It, it symbolizes in our minds the concept of many individuals. But group does not exist by itself. You cannot touch a group. You can touch individuals only. It's similar to the concept of the word forest. You can look at a forest, you say, well, I'm looking at a forest, but you're not. You're looking at trees. They're only trees. And so the word forest is this abstraction for the concept of many trees. And the same thing is true in social s structures. The word group is a very deceptive word. We think that the group somehow has rights. Well, since there is no such thing as a group, we're really dealing with the concept of, of many individuals having somehow more rights than, uh, than a smaller group of individuals. And so uh, that really, if you follow it all the way to its core, is a question of mathematics. Uh, Collective is, is based on the substance uh, that uh, three people um, really have the right to tell two people what to do regardless, because there's three against two. And once you boil it down to the issue of mathematics, it falls apart, because um, human rights are not based on mathematics. Uh, I know we don't have time for a lot of this, but something that just occurred to me this morning when I was thinking about this concept, uh, they say that the, uh, the greater good of the greater number is, is accomplished by giving the larger number the right to dictate to the smaller number. But when you think it through, it's just the opposite. Let's suppose that you had uh, uh, four different elements in society. You had a group called uh, red, a group called green, a group that's blue, and then a smaller group that are purple. The red, green, and blue represent different classes or groups of society, and the purple ones are the administrators, the government officials, the police, the courts, and all of the bureaucrats and the politicians that are going to regulate this great society. So you say, well, a group, uh, the first two groups, red and green, uh, decide to take all the property away from blue. And that's certainly for the greatest good of the greater number, because red and green is a greater number than blue. So if that's your point, then finally the greater good of society has been served in that uh, equation. But now the next time around, uh, green and blue decide to take away the property of red. And you say, well, in that instance also, the greater good of the greater number has been served. And then finally, to round it out, you get, uh, uh, red, what did they do, red and green, green and blue. Well, blue and red then get together and take away the property of green. And here again, uh, the greater good of the greater number has been served. But when you stand back and look at the whole process, uh, all of the groups have been plundered by the others. And you might say, well, it all evens out, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, because there's a fourth group, the purple. And every time there's a plundering action going on, the purple wind up with a pretty good share of the action just for their administrative services. And so when you follow it all the way through at the end of this process, all of society has been damaged by this greater good for the greater number concept, you see. The only greater good for the greater number really comes from the concept of individualism. When you deny the majority to, to take away the rights or the property of the minority, if you hold up the individual as the supreme element in society instead of the group, under that philosophy, under that ideology, now you do actually have the greatest good for the greatest number.